some people think that you're taking the place of God among your, you, you know, your sheep that you pastor. Uh. That instead of, you know, remnants worshiping the God that you serve, they are worshiping you. Mm. But you, you, say, I, you say the thing, the strange thing is, uh, some of the people who bear, who think that they have, who bear that in mind, uh, or who actually think that, uh, have never been even at Zoe Fellowship, but for some reason. They are, they are masters at my doctrine. For some reason, they know everything I do. They don't, I have a lot of uh, you know, uh, media outlets eh? uh, where I, you know, there's the power of prophecy, my program where you know, uh, they, they don't follow them, they don't watch them, but for some reason, they actually, they are experts at what I preach, they're experts at my doctrine, they're experts at what happens at Zoe Fellowship, but they've not even been there. So you see, I, uh, at, I mean, you know, so, uh, mm. you know, there's so people, Kissing your shoes, they saw people literally worshiping you, and all of them, you know, and it's that whole whole scenery it created, and people are thinking, you know, uh, you said worshiping the God that Monya worships, they're worshiping. God well, uh, that is, uh, I, I think that, that was a great, you know, that kind of whatever they saw that one that Hona day. The, I remember, I know that's what you're probably referring to. Was if a person reacted to it and said, uh, uh, you know. Uh, and said, oh, these people are worshipping you. Uh, maybe m m most of it is, uh, I, I, some of it might be genuine, eh? but the other side of it might just be, a, 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 you know, a display of gross scriptural ignorance. Because you see, uh, <laughs> in Second Kings chapter 2, I believe, verse 15, uh, we see after Elisha the prophet had received the mantle from Elijah, it says the sons of the prophets who are really the followers of the prophet, uh, who you may call the remnants, it says they came and then they bowed themselves to the ground before Elisha. Then <laughs> if the next scripture says, uh, then Elisha says, no, don't worship me, worship God, you know, then they would be justified. But you see, uh, what, that's why I say, you see, when, when, when you are ignorant in scripture or spiritual things, you will interpret anything just based on, upon either your biases or because of plainly ignorance. The thing is, they were, when they bowed themselves before Elijah, I mean Elisha, after he received, they were recognizing that the mantle of Elisha, you see, the mantle of Elijah, the prophet, had rested upon him, so they were basically celebrating and in reverence or, and in awe of the anointing that was in operation upon him. Then you go in the New Testament, you see Peter and the, the, the apostles, you know, uh, it was uh, the, the, uh, the, when they were moving between people. And then he says, various people thronged themselves just that even Peter's shadow. Can you imagine? I'm walking and people are trying to bow before my shadow so that it might touch on them such that they might be healed. Now Peter didn't tell them, stop washing, it is God who is no. He says they were healed and it was the work of God. So you see, in spiritual matters, what you reverence what you hold in esteem and in awe works for you. And on the other, this culture of uh, treating the anointing, the anointed man and the anointing upon the man with indifference is what has caused less and less miracles in the broad segment of the church. Less and less miracles. You see, because when you see it working in the, in, in, uh, the early church and in the days of the scripture, then you, you want to find out why is that secret? Why were, when you bow before, like what is what again we see in uh, the, the, the portions with with Elisha the prophet and then with people like Peter when that happens and it is done in worship it is wrong but you see one expression one physical expression of something cannot just cannot be interpreted should not be interpreted by the outside person it's what the person him who's doing it on the inside first of all number one I didn't sanction, sanction it but number two it is scriptural for someone to revere the anointing about some, someone and then treat it that way. You go and find several in the scriptures. You, you'll find it and that's how they draw. You know? And then, uh, you know, when I, I faced these things when I was walking with God after I'd just gotten born again and all these things and the Spirit of God was teaching me. And uh, one of the things that he told me in the beginning was, uh, you know, do you want to end up in the present state of, uh, you know, the church, you know, where you hardly can see anything happening, uh, you know, from above? Eh? You know, that means you've got to really dig deeper into the scriptures, dig deep into the spirit of God because it says you error, not knowing the 
the scriptures, nor the power of God. So you have to really delve deeper into either of these, the scriptures and the power of God. So I, I had to find a secret in both of these things to, uh, you know, to retrieve what I was not seeing broadly in what? In, in, in the, because you who is trying to lecture me, I am not seeing any power of God in your life. So do you want me to end up like you? you see? So I had to find something different because I don't admire what, 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 what I did admire what I was seeing. So I had to, you know, find how, how, how do you feel, Prophet Mbonye, yeah. when people are bowing before you? Uh, how do you feel? Uh, it is uh, my, in my personal nature, it, my personal nature, without even talking about the spiritual, and uh, people who know me know that, eh? I don't like attention for the starters. I basically don't like attention. I don't like, um, uh, I don't like being like, praised. Later on, what you're talking about, eh? I don't like attention, I don't like being praised. Actually, I think I even thrive more being criticized eh? because it, uh, again, like, I, I mean, I, I feel, I, I, I don't know, I, I like detaching myself from anything that tries to put me up. You see, I, I normally am attacked for, for simply believing God. You know, when, when, when I believe God, I do not, God to me is not some kind of, you know, I theoretically believe him. When the God factor, is at work in me, when I, I factor God in my life, I take him seriously. I, he changes all things. To me, if God now comes into play, I no longer think about you know, things like you know, impossibilities because that means I'm reducing God to the level of man. So you see, uh, and yet he has a revelation about, about himself, how he's actually all conquering, how he has made his church be the restraining force in the earth. Now, in other words, if the church took its place as that restraining force, if, if it didn't take the sway of the world and run around in fear, but if it took its, its position as the restraining power, then we would not be in darkness just as the rest of the world is. So you see, that is, you know, most of the things that actually, uh, you know, are thrown at some of us, you know, and, and the whole ridicule, which I, by the way, do not, uh, which I take as a compliment, <laughs> the ridicule and, uh, you know, the scorn, I actually take as a compliment, uh, bearing in mind where it's coming from. You see, uh, uh, you wouldn't, uh, Solomon, want uh, the devil to praise you, would you? <laughs> so, you see, when I see the crowd, when I see the person complimenting me and the person ridiculing me or scorning me, I, uh, for me, who that person is, um, is what matters most. Because uh, Jesus said, Jesus said that uh, the world, if the, if, if the world hates you, you know that, you know, it hated me first. Then he said, the world would love its own. You see, eh? so, the world would, so in other words, if I'm being praised by, you know, the world, then I belong to them. You see, then he said, so for me, when I see a ridicule and a scorn from, from a group, you know, that I consider, you know, ungodly, that I consider worldly, that I consider, you know, uh, merely religious, but I don't have a relationship with God. Uh, I, uh, I take that as a compliment. I take that because I, I wouldn't want the devil to praise me. And, uh, and you know, and when I, when I see, when I see, uh, you know, because it happened with Jesus, when, and it happened also with the religious folk, you know, when he, you know, his, and they would hide in the, uh, you know, they would, in, in the guise of scripture. You say, you know, you are blaspheming. You know, really, really just people. You are blaspheming, telling Jesus, the word of God. You are blaspheming. So you see, I've, I've come to, to, to that place of, uh, you know, when, uh, when you see some of these things, there's some of these things which, which I take as compliment. You hope one day that you will, mm. you know, run out of patience and confront the people who you say are fighting you and are portraying you in bad light. When I do it, eh, it will not just be mere words. <laughs> when I do it, a lot will shake. It will not be mere words. It will be a spiritual force. But uh, I, it will come to that time if there is no repentance. Um, it will come to that time. Uh, you, you, you've got to reserve room for you know, some people to see and some people to... Yesterday, like in the night, I was praying for some of those people. Last night. Some of them have heaped upon themselves pastors who were irrelevant and they have given, them, they have given back their relevance just, their relevance now is to attack Prophet Elvis. You see, pastors, 
or at least those who are labeled pastors, you see? So, uh, and yet you still pray for them. I do, I do, I actually do. And last night, I was actually, I spent almost like 30, 40 minutes just on some of those people because they control some things. But it was just, just that, because the ultimate is obviously the soul of man. You know, you don't, it's not willing that any should perish. I don't will, especially, you know, when you know about the ultimate judgment, you will not will anyone to, you know, to fall into it. So you go the distance for anyone. Has this negative energy mm. and you know, you know, bad smearing from the people who are fighting you, who you say are against the Zoe Fellowship, does it in any way affect your ministry? It affects it in the sense that, uh, you know, whatever we try to do, um, we've got to battle through it. Things that would be very simple. We find they've put roadblock here, roadblocks here, roadblocks here, scrutiny here. And, uh, you know, so you find you're dealing with so many things like, you know, so it affects it in that way. But again, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Eh? So you stand on that and, you know, you know, when the devil comes against you, the devil's crowd comes against you, you know, it will not prevail. Yeah, but of course you find that you, you push more than uh, the average ministry would do, you know, that is in favor with uh, some of these people. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the reason why I brought this up is mm. because, mm. I mean, the problem is if you really talk ill about me everywhere mm. I go, then people will look at me as bad. And yet, from you, I feel like you're mm. saying that people just say whatever they're saying, they're not going to understand where I'm coming from. Mm. They don't understand the ministry that I'm serving. They don't mm. understand that you know, I'm into prophecy, and this is where God has called me, and, and, and it's in a way very, you know, bad for people to, you know, perhaps attack you, like you say. Yeah, it is. But, but you know, the, the strange thing again is uh, the more they have done that over the years, the more we keep increasing. The more thousands flock, the more worldwide, you know, you know we, we, we receive worldwide, you know, um, you know. Yeah, so the thing is, Jesus said again, I will build my church. The church is not built by how m media tries to paint you or taint you, uh, how uh, you know, certain systems try to portray you. And by the way, if I reacted on, for instance, even the little things, eh, you know, and uh, they, they actually concerned me to the degree in which I, uh, I was literally affected. I'm not talking about this simple thing of, hey, what's wrong with this guy? I mean, literally affected and literally concerned about it, then I would not be any different from them. Uh, the church is high-fiving with the world eh? uh, when it comes to, to things spiritual. Let's, let's say if a man of God is attacked by the world, the crowd that will high-five them <laughs> with the church, you know, you know, will be you know, uh, people that claim to be actually Christians. And when you find yourself there, you're not a Christian. Well, you might be, but you're really, really cannot. You're kind of Christian. You see, the, the thing is, uh, when the, the church has got to know what she is. The church ought to know that it is, it is a, it's a spiritual body. It's the body of Christ. It functions in the embodiment of the spirit of God with all its gifts and, and not in theory. Now, if that is the case, then it is good to know that, uh, you know, the things that are higher than, uh, you know, canon knowledge. Canon, but you see now when you start tapping into that and showing the world is that cult. That's the devil. Nothing attributed to God. Eh? So you find that uh, what would have been, uh, you know, the hate and, you know, uh, of these things from the world and would have been no more is now, you know, the, the world. They, by the way, there should mean no reason as to why a Christian would high five with the world because some so-called so man of God has been attacked or no reason as to why the world should join in celebration. It, there is, uh, I'm saying that again to answer your question about the, the, you know, why the church and prophecy. When you read in the book of Revelations, there are, scripture talks about two prophets who are witnesses of God and it says uh, they were prophesying and were you know, working wonders and uh, miracles. And so it says um, a time came when the Antichrist killed them and says they left their bodies on the streets and says globally on live TV, uh, they, their bodies were shown live on news. It's in the book of Revelation. And then one thing that, you know, that uh, sobers us up, especially when you are a Christian in this day and age, is uh, uh, the, the, the nature of the hatred of the spirit of this age. Because it says 
they act, the world actually celebrated. Now, later on, social media scorning. You know, here they are celebrating that the men of God have died. These are prophets, true prophets of God. Now, it says they celebrated about, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the, their death. Eh? Now, the strange bit is, if you found a Christian joining in that way, of a man of God who has actually been demonstrating God, it is, it, it, by the most of it goes to the leaders that are insecure in some of our churches. When God anoints someone and calls him in, uh, you know, in the office of the prophet, he's, 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 not, he's, he's not saying I'm favoring him. Eh? You know, I don't know, but it's, 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 it happens to be that uh, there's some pastors, some leaders who, because they cannot prophesy, they will, they will actually be jealous. This is just plain things. They will actually be jealous and, and try to, th and, and they will think that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, attention, and because the, their security and their, ambi and their intentions are really not rooted in the building of the kingdom. They, it's, it's really about themselves. So, and because of that, they will start spreading false prophet, false prophet, false prophet, because they know that people will see the prophetic and they think that people will say, for you, why aren't you prophesying? Instead of being comfortable in their calling as a pastor, you know, God does not say everyone is a prophet. Eh? The Bible says, Are all prophets? No. You see, are all workers of men? No. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So you see, you've, you've, you, because of that insecurity, and especially it comes from the leaders, they see they do not have something, a certain gift, so they've got to tarnish it such that they can keep their people. And that's, nothing could be more absurd than that. Yeah, so that is, that is what and I've been trying to find ways. We've been talking with some people on how we can get past this pettiness and get the body of Christ together. You know, I may be something, you are something that I'm not. I, Solomon, I cannot pastor. People have pushed me to start a church. I don't have the grace to pastor. I can't. You know, the pastor, pastor it takes a lot of, you know, it takes, you know, administrative gifts. You know. Yes, I can't. So he has a special calling. I do have something different. You know, you know, let's be secure. Let's support each other. Let's stand in unity. Last time my colleague asked you a question, Mabel, whether you uh. had seen God. Uh. And it had a lot of reactions. So many, <laughs> okay. many, many thought that you didn't get the question properly. So okay. have you seen God? Well, uh, I would build up to that. Eh? Um, you know, Solomon, when you are, when you, when you, if you found someone who grew up, who, who's grown up um, in some remote rural area, and uh, they are so far removed from uh, uh, technology, um, you know, they have a normal to them. If you came and told them about all these greeds and all these things, and you know, uh, you know, you know, and if they, if you happen to get them at some point and ex told them and about, you know, how you can create these holograms and all this stuff, eh? it would be like, you know, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, in other words, your normal is abnormal to them. Eh? Now, so life actually, life, life has different levels. Yeah. There are those who live on the most basic level of life, and that is the physical, the earthly. They are like the rural person who is so distant from spiritual realities. So when you mention something which to you is your normal, but the, what is your normal to me may be abnormal. <laughs> what is my normal to use? What will create that? You see, just like uh, you know, a friend of mine was telling me how someone was telling him, oh, why do you celebrate that prophet so much? And he told them, why do you celebrate Messi so much? <laughs> you know, why do you have Messi? Well, you see, so you see, the things that you celebrate, the things that you consider normal, that to me, you know, and then the vice versa. So the thing is, uh, I, I experience a lot of things, actually, more than more than an eighth of those things, uh, a big fraction, a huge fraction of them uh, will never be told because it cannot be told. A lot of those things. And because again, some of them obviously I shouldn't say, but some of them I should. Eh? But uh, you know, if, if you mean God, the Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, yes I have. 
and it hasn't been once. It has been several times. And um, the only way you can uh, actually... It's normal for you. It is. And you can just say, why do these people consider it a very abnormal thing? But then again, I understand. It's because I was there. You know, I, I, I've had that kind of life where I'm detached from, you know, the spiritual and I think everything is physical, you know. Uh, so I, I have a bit of understanding. But after years of a lot of these encounters, sometimes I wonder, I said, are these guys merely pretending that they don't understand this? Yes, yeah, so it has been several times. And if you want proof, I normally don't like saying things that... Uh, uh, cannot be proved. The moments, the times when I've said, some of the times when I've said, I have had an encounter with him. He has told me something. I've told it to the thousands, over 8,000 attend every Tuesday, a fellowship. So I've told them, and they have seen it come to pass. So who was, who was telling me those things? <laughs> you see, I, 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 how was I just, you know, so, so the thing is, um, it was just, it's not once, it's not twice, 